Right, so negative indices. Oh, also fractional indices. I don't think you need to do that at uh, foundation. It's, it's a higher tier uh, topic. So anything on fractional indices like question two, we will skip. Question five, we'll skip. Uh, and so on. I, and unfortunately, there's a few fractional indices. Uh, we might find some more questions on negative indices. So let's have a look um, at negative indices. We'll just remind ourselves what indices are in general or powers. If I went three, if I wrote three and then do a little two, we might already know we could call this three squared and it means three times three. If I did three to the power of three, um, then that would be three times three times three. So the uh, the um, this this number at the top, we can call that the power, or we can call it the indice. Now the number at the bottom, um, we don't often learn that number is often not mentioned, but it's called the base. Okay, so the number at the top is called the power or indice, and the number at the bottom is called the base. Okay, so the indice or the power tells you how many times you're going to multiply it. So this is when it gets really confusing. How can you multiply it one and a half times, or how can you multiply it a negative amount of times? Well, to, to understand that, we're going to... Uh, try to look, uh, try to um, imagine things in a bit, get, go into it in a bit more detail and have a look at some patterns. So if three squared is three times three, let's, let's start from the beginning. Let's go just with, I'll do three squared here. You know, three squared is three times three. Uh, three cubed is three times three. Oh, I know what I'm going to do. I'm going to just copy that, and then I'm going to copy this. Now, three. if we say that's 3 squared, that's 3 cubed, what do we call this? This is when we have to say to the power of 3 to the power of 4. We can say 3 to the power of 3, 3 to the power of 2, but we have special words cubed and squared when we do that. But otherwise, we just say 3 to the power of Three to the power of four. So three to the power of four would be three times three times three times three. I think that's three times three times three times three, yeah. So notice as you go upwards, as you increase the power, you keep multiplying it by the base, okay? So we're multiplying it by three each time we go up. And each time we go down, we're dividing it by three. So we're doing the opposite. So let me just make a bit more space here, dividing it by the base. So if I were to go all the way down to three to the power one, um, then that would be just three. So we've got four threes, three threes, two threes, one three. So what about three to the power zero? That's a little bit strange. Some people might say it's zero, but because we're, going, we're dividing it by three each time, three divided by three is not zero. Three take away three is zero. Three divided by three is one. So, so that, take us, that takes us to the zeroth power, okay? Is, um, three to the power of zero. What about if we keep going? Three to the power of negative one. Remember, we still divide by three. So, it's one divided by three. Three to the power of negative two. Well, it's, we divide it by three again. This is when it gets a little bit confusing. Um, it's gonna be one third divided by three. Well, um, if you know how to divide uh, fractions by, by things, then, uh, well, we, okay, it's the same, that is the same as saying one third times one third, because when you divide by three, it's the same as times you get by a third, which is equal to one over three squared, isn't it? So three to the power of negative three, you can guess it's going to be one over three squared divided by three or times by a third, so it's gonna be one over three cubed. So essentially, whenever you do a negative, 
it's it's in fact you can say three to the power of negative x is the same as one over three to the power of x. So that's really all there is to it with the negative powers. And then there is this um, other thing that we need to just be aware of, which is anything, not just three, anything to the power of zero gives you one. Okay, anything to the power of zero gives you one. So I'm just going to pause the video and get the rest of the rules um, so we can look at those as well. So these are the rest of the laws of indices. Um, as it says here, uh, this is GCSE higher only. If you are doing higher, then uh, you will need to know this bit, but I'm not going to go over this here. Um, so this is the one that I've just gone over. I mentioned this one as well. We also have these. So if I number these as one, two, three, four, five, and six, we just went over five and three. Uh, we'll look at number one, then we'll do three again. Three squared times three to the power of three. We just add the powers, three to the power of five. Um, with, with, so that's, that's rule one, rule two. Let's do a different number now. Let's go two to the power of three. Hang on, two to the power of three. Uh, no, divided by two to the power of two is going to equal to two to the power of three minus two, which is one, or in other words, two. So two cubed divided by two squared is two. Um, I could explain those in a bit more detail, but the main thing we want to be looking at here is negative powers, so I'm not going to go over much more there. Um, and lastly, we've got question, we've got part four. Uh, let's, let's do five this time. Five uh, cubed, um, all squared, which would be five, and we multiply those m and n's, so that would be three times two, which is six. Now this one's an interesting one because uh, if I did five squared all cubed, that would still give you five to the power of six, which means that five cubed all squared is the same as five squared all cubed. They're the same thing. So it doesn't matter which one you put inside or outside the bracket there, you still get the same answer. Um, so we're going to be focused mainly on negative indices here. Okay, so I'll just stop the video and we'll have a look at these questions.